So today we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between linear equations and quadratic equations, and then we're going to really delve into solving quadratic equations. So what I would like you to do right now is I would like you to stop the video and try problems one through four. Question four might be a little tricky, and as soon as you get stuck, then you should just stop and tune back into the video. All right, so stop the video and try problems one through four. So for number one, you should have gotten that x was equal to negative 11 over 5 or negative 2 and 1 fifth. I want to remind you that you're following the steps simplify, collect, isolate, check. And remember that after you simplify, if you have variables on both sides, you're supposed to then collect your variables to one side of the equal sign. If you did not get no solution for number two, it might be because you uh, forgot to collect. So notice I simplified by distributing, then I combined my like terms here. I got the negative 3x, but since I have negative 3x on both sides, when I go to collect those variables to one side of the equal sign, the variables cancel out to leave me with a statement that is false. When your variables cancel out and they leave you with a statement that is false, there's no solution. That means that there's not a number for x that would make this equation true. These two equations are said to be linear equations. So right up here, these two are linear equations. So looking at question number three, question number three, we have solved a couple problems like this. So the, the thing that makes this a little bit tricky is that you end up getting a squared variable. So if you follow along, when you combined your like terms after you distributed, you got 75, negative 75x here. You do need to collect the x's to one side of the equal sign, and those canceled out. Because those canceled out, I was just left with 3x squared equals 75. So I can continue to isolate the variable by dividing by 3. Now, reminder, when you're left with x squared equals 25, Remember, we're canceling things out by doing the opposite. The opposite of squaring a variable is to then find the square root of the variable. So we square root the both sides. The square root of x is x squared is x. But then you have to remember that when you do the square root of 25, you have to remember that positive 5 squared equals 25. So does negative 5 squared equals 25. So your answer here is not just x equals 5. It's x equals plus or minus 5. Okay, so anytime you find the square root of both sides of an equation, you've got to account for the fact that there are two numbers that can be squared to equal that, the positive number and the negative number. So this particular equation, because it has a squared variable and it ends up having two solutions, this is called a quadratic equation, which is true for question number four. However, we run into a problem with question number four. So I didn't finish this one because I wanted to talk about it. When you distribute the x, you get x squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 2x minus 9. Now, typically, if I'm just trying to continue to solve, I want to collect variables to one side. So I have two choices here. I can subtract the 2x from both sides, or I can add the 4x from both sides. But no matter what you do, we end up having a problem, right? If I subtract the 2x from both sides, then I'm left with x squared minus 6x minus 4 equals 9. And then many of you might be like, well, let's try to isolate the variable. So then add 4 to both sides. Oops, that should be negative 9. And then you get x squared minus 6x equals negative 5. Now the problem now is that the isolating the variable isn't possible. The reason we can't isolate the variable here is because x squared and x are not like terms. So these can't be combined, so I can't get the variable alone. So this is the type of quadratic equation that requires a different method. We cannot actually solve this by isolating the variable because that x term and having that x squared term in the same problem messes things up. So we are very soon, not today, but very soon going to learn how to solve an equation like this. There's two different methods we can use. We can use this method, the factoring method, which you're going to learn tomorrow, and or we can use the quadratic equation which you may have heard of, okay? So frustrating enough, 
for you guys, I can just tell you that the answer to this question, you have no way of knowing how to get it yet. The answer to this question is actually one and five. And you will learn how to get that answer later. Today we're gonna to focus mostly on quadratic equations like number three. So these two equations right here are called quadratic equations. And quadratic equations typically have two solutions. I cannot finish my word equation. Anyway, that's just say quadratic equations. Now, I just gave those equations names, linear equations and quadratic equations. We've been dealing with all sorts of polynomials this year that have specific names. And the name is based on the degree of a polynomial. The degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent on the variable. So now if you take a look at these examples, 8, negative 10, 76,432, you would typically just say those are numbers. We say that these are numbers that have a degree of zero. The reason they have a degree of zero is because there are no variables on them. And I could, if I wanted to, put a variable on it and say it's x to the zero power, x to the zero power, x to the zero power. But that's not fully simplified because, as you recall, x to the zero power is actually equal to one. So this would be like eight times one, which is just eight, negative 10 times one, which is just negative 10, and 76,432 times one, right? These right here, numbers that stand alone without variables, have a degree of zero, and they are called constants. So you already knew that, but now you know it has a degree of zero. Now, these next three expressions, they all have a degree of one. The reason they have a degree of one is because the exponent on the x would be an imaginary little one. These are called linear expressions. And as we just got finished talking about, when you have like y equals 2x minus 3, or y equals x plus 1, or y equals 6x, those end up creating lines, hence the word linear. They have, it has the word line in it. The next three expressions, the highest exponent on these is a 2. And that means that these are actually called quadratic. These are quadratic expressions. In Algebra 1, we mostly are just focusing on constants, linear equations, and quadratic equations. A couple of problems that we end up doing will be degrees of 3. These expressions right here, because the highest exponent is 3, it, these guys are called cubic expressions. If the highest exponent is 4, they are called quartic, like a quarter. And then anything higher than a 4, we just name it by its degree. So 9x to the 5th would be called a 5th degree polynomial. 9x to the 6th, that one, because the highest exponent is 6, that would be a 6th degree polynomial. And the last one would be an 8th degree polynomial. So what I like to say is we just call these the nth degree, where n equals the highest exponent. Now we are going to focus on linear and quadratic, but I just want to remind you the difference between expression and equation, right? Expressions are things that we can simplify or evaluate. Equations are things we can solve, right? So here are some examples of linear equations. Here are some examples of quadratic equations. Remember, expressions don't have equal signs. Now, focusing on solving equations, remember the solution to an equation are the values of the variable that will make the equation true. So the when we're talking about linear equations, reminder that the degree of a linear equation is 1, and 
the number of solutions, typically when we solve a linear equation, like question number one on the other side of this paper, we got one solution, right? When we got x equals a negative 11 over 5, that's one possible solution. But then the second problem, everything canceled out and we got no solution. And then we also, if everything cancels out and you get a true statement, that would mean that the number of solutions is all real numbers. So the maximum number of solutions other than all real numbers for a linear equation would be one. Typically, linear equations have one solution. Now, quadratic equations, like questions three and four, they have a degree of two, and we found out that there are two solutions. Now, sometimes there is only one, and sometimes you do get no solution, and sometimes you get all real numbers as a solution. But the maximum number of solutions it could have besides all real numbers is two. So now thinking about that, we should start to see a pattern here. If we have a cubic equation, that has a degree of three. So the number of possible solutions a cubic equation could have could be three. It could be two, it could be one, it could be no solution or all real numbers, but the maximum number of solutions that a cubic equation could have is three. Are you seeing a pattern? The maximum number of solutions that an equation can have has to do with the degree. So quartic equation has a degree of four. So when I'm solving, I could have four solutions, three solutions, two solutions, one solution, no solution or all real numbers, but the maximum number of solutions is four. So that's just the basics between linear and quadratic and all of the degrees. We're now going to talk about how to solve quadratic equations, so you're going to need to tune into the next video.